live no it says going live just assume you're all live. right i think yeah I, th I think we're live are we live chat are we live somebody in the chat say something can you hear us yeah i think you're live i refreshed the the page okay cool well if we're live good evening dungeon masters i'm baron drop i'm joined by a good friend of the channel narb makes uh, right. And we're here to do a uh, first look of Galder's Gazetteer uh, by Zipper on Disney. Uh, neither of us have really looked at the. I think I've taken a, a few quick glances at this uh, product here that Zipper on Disney has written. And all the proceeds for this, by the way, um, for like the Galder's Gazetteer publication uh, and everything that he's done for that has been donated to the charity that we're donating to today. So uh, if you've want, I, I just want to continue the uh, continue the giving and uh, I've got a $500 goal to give to the cancer research Institute, but just to sweeten the deal here uh, zipper on himself told me that everybody who donates to the cancer research Institute and if we hit the $500 goal, we will all get, everybody who donated will get a copy of his Fire and Ice adventure that he has also published. Uh, so I, I think it's in the Galder's Gazetteer book. We're about to find out, I guess. I have not looked at this. Uh, Narb, yep, you want to introduce you... yourself and talk about your channel for just a second? Sure. Thanks yeah. for joining me. I'm Narb Makes, and yeah, I was just telling Ryan earlier, I don't even know what my channel is about anymore. I just I just make <laughs> stuff, so... If you're if you don't know me, go check it out and look at a video no. or two. <laughs> yeah, no, he he's got great stuff. Lots of cool. Uh, like if you're crafty at all and want to get into you know making stuff for Dungeons and Dragons, um, you know, really easy crafts, like shockingly easy yet extremely effective. If you at are are at all any good with a paintbrush and a pair of scissors, check him out. Um, but he's also got some really just cool dioramas and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining me today, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. All right. So first look, here we go. Let's dive in. And boom. Galder's Gazetteer. All right. So I like, I like the font. You like the font? I like that it's purple. You know, <laughs> and I, I I know this is just like the title, but and this is just the PDF. But I really appreciate that it's something other than red. <laughs> you know what I mean? something different yeah that's a lot so of kickstarter backers. a lot of kickstarter backers well done zip yeah and all, like every single one of these people helped donate to a good cause too like you know zip didn't take any of the proceeds from this <laughs> so dedication uh song where most of the gaming let's see here for a good cause sensitive content we might get a little saucy today uh let's see dragon folk ancestry includes a kind who believe themselves superior due to their physiology colors right. and spoons can be read as sex work and spoony as sensuality or sexuality not my first see. thought but <laughs> <laughs> the college of spoons that must be a like a, a bard thing i, I i'm looking oh, forward yeah. to see that <laughs> i always like like an over-the-top bard joke where like it's so inappropriate it comes back around to being appropriate <laughs> bards are always silly i know right quick drink of my some mild drug soda references here. for uh yeah mild drug for references. sorcerers there you go uh let's see existential resonance sorcerer yep has mild drug references okay cool uh so uh, correct cool. me I, I read a bit about this book about like the why it was made and stuff so galder is um the wizard of um of this player um who had cancer correct me if i'm wrong mm. oh that's that's a perfectly fitting dedication i should have looked into that for uh sat down i'm glad you did yeah. your homework and i think Thank you. Uh, the whole project was as a way to like remember his uh, mm. character and have him like uh, reach out to other gamers and kind of weave him into the multiverse of right very cool of everyone's games Let's see we've got so this is, this a like letter personal letter yeah, yeah. Letter i don't know how much how much do you want to like spoil this versus <laughs> let people enjoy the that yeah. themselves i don't know 
we'll uh we'll take a look here at uh the yeah I, i'm not gonna read the the letter yeah. from yeah from galder fair. unretired but we'll uh we'll leave that for the players to do uh okay so we've got lawrence's story to go Galder's preference i think we're past that uh expanded rules conditions actions and martial attacks so i hope that this is something that uh gets more attention because i think fifth edition itself for all of its crunchiness does not put enough emphasis on like the tactics and like the mechanics of how like tripping yeah. disarming and stuff like that works it seems very kludgy and afterthought so That's hopefully cool. hopefully zips got this and it seems to be yeah, it seems to be like a generic martial attack not just like martial right. fighter features mm -hmm. yeah that's cool yep oh, and then they group. do have uh, each class has its own i guess subclasses paths for barbarians yeah. colleges for bards that's cool yeah yeah so, so this is kind of like um like a tasha's cauldron or you know right right right, right. Books. let's see we got what do we got blood sage barbarian hopefully that's like high wisdom that's something that always like I thought was interesting is like wisdoms tended to be but mm -hmm. yeah. kind of like un flew under the radar as like a a stat that was important to the barbarian so oh, i'd like is, uh, do you know if there is magic. a barbarian that's very intelligence focused or is that just antithetic Ooh. to barbarians i mean because that would know. be cool i'd love to see that yeah i'd love to see that oh well, there's oh, that that sorcerer variant the existential resonance origin where's that existential resonance that That'll be cool. fun to look at. Yeah, haunted soul, primal soul, pyromancer. Of course, pyromancer. I think How's that I, not already a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I think uh, Zip might be in the chat and cool. uh, correct me, but uh, I think I did a live stream, like live play, on Zip's channel when my channel was first getting going, and I played a pyromancer character. I think that's the cor correct. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I believe it was told that it was a, a Humber class sold in Galders. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to zip back up here and take a look at Paladin. We've got Oath of Remembrance, Transcendence. Ooh, Transcendence. That's a fun word. Is that, How do you pronounce that? Oath of Triune? The, Triune? Triune, um, yeah. Triune? Triune? I don't know. Okay. But we'll we'll check that's it out. A oh, warlock. Don't even get me started about a oh, warlock. I'm probably going to get that's a lot of wizard traditions. <laughs> I mean, I love it. Dark yeah. arts, chronomancy. Oh, this is. I, I, guess I, you, I hope would, this is balanced. <laughs> <laughs> you would expect this to have a lot of wizard traditions because it's because Galder was a wizard. I'm assuming, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, chronomancy. I'm, I'm all about time travel. So time travel. Yeah, I know. You and I have talked at length about time travel. Too, we too need much. to. We need to do <laughs> too much. We need to do an episode about time travel together. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, we may or may not have already been discussing that. You know, subscribe to both our channels, everybody. We will be talking about time travel <laughs> and D and D in the near future. Uh, let's see, wandering mage, and then ancestries of dragonfolk and T Tigro. I guess that's a uh, like a half half tiger type. Uh, cool. So let's see here. So oh it continues it continues we've got all kinds of words Ooh, penumbra storm mm. celestial cool folk groups uh dawn blade i, I like that there's a couple pages on feats i think feats are yeah two two pages on feats oh. i'd like i so one thing that frustrates me about fifth edition feats in general is that like they seem like there's two groups of them there's like the ones that increase your stats and then there's the ones that like give you interesting tools. Yeah, it's like that... expand your character laterally. Ex right, exactly. Numerically. I think but you have then... a full video on that. If I'm not I, I, you're you're right. I do. You have reminded me that I have a full video on my frustration with that. But uh, yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see what he's got here. Uh, oh, and new spells. I always like good spells. I always love a new set of spells. And then, okay, this is my jam right here environments toolkit yeah whimsical tainted lavascape oh zip you were 
you're whispering sweet nothings into my ears and i love this templates like why why do we have a monster manual it should be like a 16 page yeah, zine that templates. shows you yeah let's see variant rules all right like whenever i run a campaign i typically do just take a monster and just change it right I take the the stats of a monster and then just transplant it into what i want to make right Let's see here and then variant rules horde combat that'll be cool to look call at as, as shots huh. call shots you know i've not seen a way to do that in fifth edition that i feel respects hit points properly i'm curious to see what it look what zip has done here that'll be fun uh, falling damage that absolutely also needed an overhaul. Oh, by the way, I just glanced at the chat here, and a bunch of very generous people have already donated. Oh wow! Do you want to call those out or? Yeah, well, I was gonna take a look at it when we got to the end of the, but okay. you know, we're down to we're down to adventures, challenges with traps and factions, and then you know various appendices. So and then an index and then the OGL. So yeah, let's take a look at the chat here. We've got uh, John Evans has donated fifty dollars. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you very much. Uh, Eric Mogan has also donated ten. Somebody, the anonymous uh, Anon, has an, entered the chat with a fifteen dollar <laughs> donation. And Bandits Keep Daniel, thanks so much. I really appreciate that twenty bucks. How how close are we? We're ninety five dollars. We're a fifth of the way there. We're a fifth of the way there, and we haven't really even started looking at content. You guys are awesome. <laughs> I love the art. This is awesome. I know. Zip, you might have to tell me who did the artwork here. I might have to steal them for any of my future projects. <laughs> Let's see here. Expanded rules. Using the book, key considerations. The game content in the book is designed with a number of assumptions about how it will be used. Here are some considerations. It's compatible with itself, the SID. And the player's handbook. Let's see. Seems to have a strong understanding of the rules of 5e. I'm, I'm glad he calls that out. That this is not a book for noobs. No, it's saying you know? the starting level. That's interesting. It's assuming the characters start at third level. What's, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, back in the day, like Gygax used to say, everybody starts at third level, right? right. Or, or he gave everybody the same amount of experience points that would get a fighter to third level i think was his thing so makes sense rogues were closer to fourth they, i don't think they were quite all the way to fourth bandit can probably uh comment to that in the chat thanks eric for the uh donation there um let's say just to get to that 100 dollar line heck yeah Perfect. uh but yeah no i like back in the olden days um when fifth edition you know it was entirely possible to have a one hit point wizard <laughs> oh yeah uh, at first level it totally made sense uh and even today like it you still have those hit points but now you got those pesky little death saves but uh you know that's fine i i, I think starting at third level is fine i i wouldn't start players higher than third level if that makes yeah. sense i feel like sense. you the mistakes your character makes in the early game narratively uh, when you're a young character, lends too much to the narrative of the story that you just completely miss out on. It's like, oh, you're awesome now. You're a 10th level fighter, but what did you do to get there? You know? So, yeah. all right, I'm reading ahead here. There's expanded sure. conditions, combat options, and some new classes. So, that's cool. I'd rather, yeah. let's see, for example, both blind and despondent condition can be inflicted upon a single creature. Curious to see what those are. And then it seems like the martial, the new martial attacks are routed here. through the extra are you, attacks. Are you, oh, feature. you're ahead of me. Uh, yeah, you're much ahead of me. Oh, yeah, I was just uh, looking at the second column. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to make everyone crazy the way I'm scrolling up and down looking for where you were at. Yeah, I had to switch to my own tab because <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Sorry everybody. I'll 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 try and scroll more consistently. Um okay, so we've got a number. Let's go integrating new conditions. We've got uh let's see, the GM can incorporate these conditions with existing monsters, class features and other effects. Uh unless otherwise noted. Yep, yep, yeah. Okay. 
So we've got bloodied, automatically inflicted when a creature is below half hit okay. points. I like that. Uh, let's see. In it's general, just like a delivery. Yeah. Like, like an info delivery, delivery method. method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like having like word prompts burned. Um, let's see here. Saving through. Failed Wait, save. Be cautious of this condition. Do? Yeah. Reduce the number of damage dice by two and instead inflect the burn condition. Be cautious. Oh, I see. Oh, replication. Oh, you get vulnerability. That's cool. Interesting. So instead of taking, instead of failing the save, you can succeed the save and then just take a vulnerability. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's kind of cool. Uh, despond it. Condition represents a sense of overwhelming hopelessness. Any effect that grants a creature advantage on saving throws being so frightened also grants advantage on saving coming to spawn it. Similarly, a creature... Huh, that's oh, cool. Hopelessness and depression. Yeah. Hmm. And then doomed, dulled, diminished creature's intellectual capabilities. Okay. Fatigued. As different than exhaustion? Yeah, it is. Less harsh than exhaustion. Let's see. The rules for this condition I might decide to use fatigue instead of exhaustion. Frenzy is to punish. In such case, the GM can allow the player to suffer fatigue instead. The next removal. Let's see. I'm not sure. Next, what is I, it, think, dude? I think exhaustion it... was always way too punishing, like for a barbarian. The path I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, more easily inflict the condition multiple times without creating a major imbalance. The rules for this the, condition. There might use... be a like a chart for this somewhere. Yeah, something. I don't see anything. Uh, rested. That's cool. That's something that I like to see. That like you should take a serious rest. Character might gain this condition for living a luxurious lifestyle. Wounded. Serious injury that limits a creature's ability to function. Oh yeah, if you scroll down to the next page, there's it actually describes what the what the oh, yeah. hey, this is what I was looking for. The respondent creature can't have advantage on ability checks. Yeah, I would, have, I would have liked to put those in line. That would have been yeah, I, I agree. Yes. In fact, like this could have gone underneath the bullet points, right? That's just a design thing. Zips in the chat too, so he gets to hear all. All of our nitpicks <laughs> and critiques. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but every time we do it, everybody should donate five. Oh, so fatigue <laughs> is a negative two penalty to attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws instead of what was it? Disadvantage at first level, or it was something something bad. Let me look it up. Sorry about my clicking. Responding creature's lowest ability score. Ooh, already fatigued, suffers a negative two penalty on attack rolls. Up to six. That's uh, interesting. That's uh, almost very third edition y. Hmm. And, and I mean that in a complimentary way. Like, like exhaustion is disadvantage on ability checks at first, then speed which is out. really brutal. Dis yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah. So this isn't as bad. I like it. Yeah. No, it that's, that's good. More. For sure. Yeah. It, if this is the stuff that's in the conditions, I'm curious to see what the classes look like because then that lends me to believe that the classes get more interesting at the higher levels, especially since Zip saying you should start doing this stuff at level three. I, I really like so. how rested is right underneath it, which is like it actually helps you because <laughs> right? like, that's not a thing in fifth edition. So the creature gains it's temporary hit points equal to half its con score. Now, does um, does suffering fatigue get rid of your rested, or how do you get rid of your rested? Uh, ooh, that's a good. Point. Oh yeah, it has condition getting fatigued. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Succession. It was right there. Wounded, negative five to dex. Is also bloodied, covering hit points. Long rest ooh. can only store hit points below the creature's bloodied value if it recovers half as many hit dice. Wow, it's would. pretty brutal. That's uh. That's that's a nice way to show that you busted your leg when yeah. you fell. I like that. And then, all right, new combat actions. Here we go. Guard. You can interpose yourself between a creature and any attackers. Okay. Uh, choose a creature that is within five feet of you. If you would grant 
if you would grant that creature cover, it gains three quarter cover from you instead of half cover until the start of your next turn, as long as it is within five feet. This reminds me, it's thematically similar to like the fighter, um, mm -hmm. like the fighter feature where you like block or you block. Right, right. Thing. What is it? Sentinel? No, not Sentinel. That's the um, protector or guardian or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got Harry. Harry Potter. Uh, Harry Potter. Choose a creature you are aware of that is within five feet of you. Describe something the creature could do or is doing that you want to interfere with. Uh, mm -hmm. Examples are doing any cool stuff, making its next attack included. The creature you Harry has Close disadvantage. disadvantage. Okay. Uh, so it's like... Um, see, what's interesting about this is what... I like about him, Zip also saying that you should start doing this at third level is that some of this stuff kind of opens up the same cantrippy stuff that other classes have that are spellcasters. Yeah. And it therefore diminishes the importance of those cantrips in a good way to those spellcasters. Because I personally think the cantrips are broken in fifth edition. Yeah. Um, this this opens up a lot more... Uh like role play opportunities too. Right. It's like right, you have to like, kind of describe what you're doing to distract this person from completing this ritual. Right. Let's see. Cool. Sunder, you attempt to break in an item creature using make a, an attack with disadvantage against a non-magical object that is no more than one size category larger than you mm -hmm. and is being worn carried by another creature. Use the objects they see but if the attack is a critical hit, the object is destroyed. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So I'm going to attack the sentient great apes brass armor breastplate. <laughs> critical. <laughs> yeah, Cleric, I mean, that'll give be me awesome. guidance. Uh, let's see here. Optional rule hit point free objects. If the object is hit with the attack and deals damage to it, the object is destroyed. That makes it so you don't have to go digging for a... Uh, Digging for a uh, what's it called? A rule book up just to see mm. how much hitch points a glass bottle has. So we're getting to the next. Uh, oh no, here we go. Escape. When you escape the action, you attempt to withdraw from combat, move your speed. If you st within reach of the creature that wants to stop you, it can attempt to grapple you as an opportunity attack. It makes so, against you. So, how is this mm. different than the. Isn't there uh, an action yeah. taken in 5th edition? That's... Yeah. When you take... Hold on, let me reread this. When you take an escape action, you attempt to withdraw from combat, move up to your speed. If you start... If before the start of your next turn, you come within the reach of a creature that wants to stop you, it can attempt to grapple you as an opportunity attack it makes against you. Why would you do this instead of disengage? Yeah, disengage seems better. Or maybe the, it's an alternative. At, well, let's look at Disengage. this. At the start of your next turn, if you can move and your distance away from each hostile creature is greater than its speed, you escape from combat and are removed from initiative order. That's oh, why see. you would do it. Yeah. Okay. If any enemies try to pursue you, you become the quarry in a chase. In a chase. That okay, sounds so like some fourth edition stuff that's for, foreshadowing things to come. Mm -hmm. So it's like a way to narratively escape a battle which yes. none of my players have ever done by the way so i don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> they fight to the death every time they enter combat <laughs> let's see here uh you attempt to escape from okay and then it's just more details about escaping uh and come about most creatures stay alert yeah 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 okay cool. uh yeah that's very um this is very uh like jrpg uh, well, that meets fifth edition. Yeah, that is kind of cool though, because as I mentioned, right. my my players have never tried to escape, but maybe because they didn't think it was an option. If you give them right. this as like a worded ability they can use, it's like, oh, maybe I can do this, right? Ooh, cool. and we have reactions. But before we get into reactions, I just want to remind everybody: uh, thank you for donating to the Cancer Research Institute. And everybody who does donate to the Cancer Research Institute in the chat uh, will also, if we meet the $500 goal, we'll also get a copy of Zipperon's 
uh, fire and ice adventure. So you should totally donate it's to a great cause. And you, it also helps you. You get a cool adventure. Yep. So let's let's take a look at. Oh, and if you don't know here. how to donate it, someone. Oh, yeah. Put a message. It's uh, it's the button with the hands right underneath where it says say something. Ah, yeah. OK. Well, thank you for calling that out, Norm. I am totally new to live streaming and I don't know what I'm doing. So I don't, I'm just reading the, the <laughs> chat here. I'm not chatting <laughs> information. Uh, I'm looking at, I'm trying to catch up. Where were we in the chat? Let's see. We've got a couple anonymous people after uh, Bandits Keep donated. Eric Morgan donated $5. We got 15 p $20. Ooh, we got a $50 chat from an, another anonymous donor. Thank you so much, guys. That's awesome. Thanks. A lot of anonymous people, um, which is awesome. Uh, you know, if uh, if you had a receipt sent to you, you can find my email address on my uh, on my about section on my YouTube channel. Just forward me your receipt and I'll make sure to get it with zip and we'll get you a copy of the the adventure. Um, yeah. So anyway, back to reactions. We've got maneuvers as a reaction. You can switch places with an ally who wants to maneuver into your position. You know, that's something that I have instinctively house ruled a lot. Yeah. And I'm not sure that I ever thought it was not rules. <laughs> huh. When that's allied weird, creature man. moves into a space you control, it can end its move there if you use your reaction to immediately. Okay, I've, that's cool. Must be able to move into the space. Yeah, that can uh, open up some new tactics for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like. Because then, ooh, what, what that means is like, you could, oh no, because you only get one reaction. How, do, how does that work? Could you, could you like, as the wizard, step into the fighter's spot, then cast a touch attack spell, and then while you're just sitting there, if the fighter has the next initiative, they just hot swap I, back. I think you'd probably, you you'd probably do this when it's like another player's turn. So like they're moving yeah. and then like, hey, let me swap place because like if you're the wizard at the front of the tunnel, you know, you don't want to be there. Swap right. places with the fighter or something like that. Absolutely. That's cool. And then we got uh, martial, martial attacks. attacks. Staggering bash. So this Replaces is only this is only if you can make group. multiple attacks, right? Uh, only you if have you the option make to use a attacks. special attack and replace right. the attacks as part of taking the attack action. Okay. Okay. When you take the attack action and hit with a melee weapon and deal bludgeoning damage, you can choose to, oh, and deal bludgeoning damage. You hmm. can choose to replace one of your subsequent additional attacks to make the attack a staggering bash. If you do so, the target you hit takes an additional damage equal to your strength modifier. And you also shove the target five feet in any direction. That's cool. So correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, grapple is something you can do as an extra attack, right? Uh, like, so is there a thing like push, shove? There's, like that? there's, there's like, I, I see it a lot. Of, I see it talked about a lot. Like extra mm -hmm. attack, you can do it, and then it becomes a gray area about like monster multi attack. Yeah. And I always insist an attack is an attack. Mm -hmm. and that you know a dragon can just try to pick you up 17 times if they've got 17 multi attacks cuz i yeah, think it's th ridiculous this is a definite to. this is a definite <laughs> upgrade because you can just like as mm -hmm. you're swinging you're doing you're doing your damage right um, you can also do this extra thing which shove definitely. them over the cliff knock them off the bridge it doesn't take away from the attack cuz that's one thing that players never like if their attack does an x amount of damage like 2d6 it's like why would i not do that that's always really good right also i just want to stop for just a second narb uh mm -hmm. take a look at the chat sir vagamon donated five dollars but then some Holy anonymous crap. person just bought the adventure for that. every subsequent person who donates well, we, we filled the goal that's we filled the goal, the goal. that's <laughs> awesome i wish i knew who you were so i could thank you but you know who you are uh that's, that's absolutely really awesome. phenomenal Right, I guess you, you can so shut much. off the stream right here, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. We've seen enough <laughs> Galders. Bye, everybody. <laughs> no, no uh, thank you so much. So that, that's absolutely incredible. I'm sure Zipperon is uh, absolutely stoked that, with that donation. That is extremely generous. Thank you so much. Let's see. So back to the back to the book. Uh, let's see. Deep Stab. 
when you make an attack action with a melee attack uh, and deal piercing damage. Drive your weapon deeper at the attack. Let's see. When you take the attack action and a deep stab, you make a special attack roll against the same target. Gain a plus five to the roll. You don't oh. add your ability modifier to the damage of the second attack. Huh. So it's you get a more surefire hit. That's useful on a dragon. Yeah. I'll tell you what. For I'll sure. I'll forego the, uh, the the plus four bonus to my ability score if I'm absolutely guaranteed I'm going to hit. I think that that reminds me of <laughs> there's like a, a feat that lets you take away a bonus to attack or like you got a negative five and you get a plus 10 damage or something. I forget what it's called, but right. Um, it's like fighters and barbarians usually take, but this is like the opposite of that, which is really cool. Right. Now that that's, that's, that's cool. I like that. Okay. And then we got expert snipe. So he zips covering like all the different, like you got the bow, you got stab, you got the thing. Okay. Uh, let's see. You gain a bonus to your attack roll equal to your level. Hmm. That's cool. We got an awesome photo or awesome illustration here. Zip, you're definitely going to have to tell me who did these illustrations. That is gnome halfling. Is there, Phenomenal. Is there an artist signature somewhere? Or? I I don't see one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna. We, I'm sure it's in the credits. Let's see here. Okay, so now we're getting into some player options. Uh. So these let's are see. the um, are these the the subclasses basically? Or? Uh, let's see here. I'm I'm gonna drive everyone crazy with how much I'm scrolling. I'm terrible. I know. I'm sorry. If you if you donate even more money to Cancer Research Institute, I promise I'll do better. Oh, this <laughs> is like a whole new class. The first one's yeah, called the option. Rebel. Called the Rebel. Okay. Let's see here. Dirt ridden, sunbaked, denizens of the city. Tyrant King is brought to the knees before the serfs and the crowd pleas are finally heard. I can't that, uh, as the Baron of the Rop River, that, uh, that's, that's, that's scary, guys. Don't do that to me. Um, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> see, shared conviction. Yep. I'm just reading, like, all of the uh, French Revolution right now. So let's uh, look. Create well, your rebel character. The, the the class table, right? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look, look at. at the more important stuff. I was I was trying to get a, a feel of the flavor, just a yeah. little bit of the flavor. All right, uh, conviction. And you know, a lot of these things I don't know by looking at the table. So but we've a, got some conviction points. The hit point. It's a one d eight class. One d eight class. Dice. So I assume it's roguish ish. Yeah, something like that. All right, light Warriors, armor, medium light armor. armor, medium shields. Deception, history, so it's like halfway between a bard and a rogue. Scale mm. mail, leather armor, diplomats, pack or explorers, plat, pack. They get determined a revolutionary them. path, a level okay. one. Let's see, conviction, pool of conviction points. You can spend these to fuel various stuff, so like a monk like your, does. Your class uh, resource yeah. pool. It's your, it's your spell points. Yep. Your MP. <laughs> Let's see. Starting at second level, you can forge a special bond with your allies. That's cool. Soul Covenant. You have a number of bonded at, equal to your charisma modifier. Shared sight. You can choose to see through a bonded creature's eyes. What? That's crazy. Prowess. You can gain proficiency in a single armor type. So you can Single make weapon. one of your party members your spirit animal, basically. Oh, man. But not only that, you can also wear the armor they can wear. Oh, I see. Shared aptitude. You gain proficiency in a single skill or tool. Oh, man. So oh, this is like, uh, what are those creatures from the Tempest block of Magic the Gathering almost? Uh, slivers. It's like slivers right. from Magic the Gathering. I've totally just alienated the chat by talking about MTG. And also apparently confirmed that I am the uh, evil twin <laughs> of Talarian <laughs> Theater, or Talarian College. Uh, let's see here. Writ of Co the Covenant starting at third level. You join a can written you, agreement. So wait, can you change the Soul Covenant? Or is it always someone? Oh, a one yeah. hour ritual. Yeah. Well, so you can it's a one it. hour ritual. Yeah. Huh. Let's see here. I guess it doesn't uh, have to be your party members. It could be anyone. It could be anybody. Anyone oh, that's, that's interesting. Anybody that's willing. So, like, town guard, 
now I get to wear heavy armor. I can put on yeah, chain mail. That's really and then cool. I switch it to I need to be good at making pottery. So I'm just going to scoop all of their. Yeah. The, yeah, the really cool one is the the skill proficiencies. Yeah. It's like, you know, go to the blacksmith and like become his apprentice for, for an adventure. Exactly. That's cool. That is really interesting. Uh, the really good role play opportunity, too, because you can just like adopt the skills of whoever is your friend. Uh, writ of mobility. You can forego any movement on your turn to hasten a bonded creature. When you do so, the bond, bonded creature can immediately use its reaction to move up to their speed without provoking opportunity. That's cool. Hmm. Without provoking opportunity. That's that's saucy. Let's oh, see here. Zip around, zip around Disney said, check the second level feature. What was that? Did we miss oh, one? Oh, did we miss one? Did Exert I see it? Influence? Help action. Did did it... Starting at second level, forge a special bond. Did we miss one? Soul Covenant. Oh, oh that might be the one you were talking about. Yeah. Use it. You can use a help action to aid an ally in combat. The ally can add a bonus to the attack roll equal to your proficiency bonus. <laughs> Wait. I just had a moment of dyslexia. What help action to add an ally in combat? The ally can add a bonus to their attack roll equal to. Oh, that's cool. That's super yeah. cool. I, and like I said, like some of the stuff is very similar to like the abilities that clerics get. And I like that some of those weaker abilities are getting shared around. Let's see here. So we got rid of fury. You can use your bonus action to turn you. To when you do so, the bonded creature you choose, uh, you choose when you use this feature can make an additional weapon attack if they take the attack action before the end of its next turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a cool ability. That was a mouthful to say and read. Uh, let's see, rid of defense. When a bonded creature is hit by an attack you can use your reaction to grant the creature a plus five bonus to its ac so same thing but opposite yeah, i really like that all of these uh features let you like help someone like yes that, that's that seems which really is useful. yeah which is interesting that it's like a rebel you know it's it's like you're it's very much more support class than i expected it would be mm -hmm. yeah but yeah you typically see like you know, the rogue character is is like they're the badass. They're doing all the right, um, all the cool things by themselves. But like abilities that let you help allies or other people are, are very cool. And then the minor writs we get at seventh level. Is, this is cool. Uh, as long as the basically, if you get a, a if you get a condition, you can pass that condition off to a bonded character. Uh, and then when a bonded creature is forced to make a saving throw, you can use your reaction to grant that creature advantage. Lots and lots of ability, like just super healthy McKelperton stuff. Uh, rid of haste. You can use to immediately use their action reaction to attack dodge hide or move up to their speed. 13th level seems to be more of the same rid of valor. Uh, bonded creature advantage on all ability checks so just further fleshing it out um wait so see. what do you what do you use conviction points for yeah Is that what we use these writs for did we miss that let's look up here choose one of the following where it's uh you can activate it by spending one conviction point okay, yeah so yeah so using yeah, you're these using these last conviction got it cool and you get like what four or five of these as you level so, up, no more than six. Table, I'm assuming. Yeah. It's uh, fourth up until fourth level, and then you get five up until eighth level, and it scales up every four levels from there. Gotcha. Yeah, so you don't have that many of these. But... Right, right. But, like, it's an it's enough to, like, if you think about, like, a typical fifth edition combat encounter or, like, a role play scenario, you're only going to have, like, three initiative rounds. Yeah before it becomes obvious who's going to win the combat right whether you need to either run or stick it out it's very seldom that you go longer than three to five rounds so that's plenty um if it's like an all-out boss fight you're going to just completely blow through all of those in one one go anyway mm -hmm. uh let's see coordinated attack bonded creature 
Let's see. Force of will. Damage from your melee or ranged attacks equal to your charisma fodder. Oh, you gain a bonus to uh you get you add your charisma modifier to your melee or ranged weapon attacks. That's cool. Hmm. Dominating presence. I guess because it's the rebel is more of like uh like a leader type thing, right? Right, 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 right. Like you're the leader of the revolution. Oh, that, right. that's what Zip Around Disney just said. You're the oh. revolutionary <laughs> leader. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, command loyalty for the next 24 hours. Let's see. You add your double proficiency bonus if you're using a skill in which you're proficient. So mm -hmm. interesting. He didn't use the word expertise. It's distinct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which makes me wonder was that intentional so that you can still use expertise? Multi class and grab yeah. 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 Uh, Let's see. I'm, I bet Zip will chime in in the comments here. Um, unmatched kinship for one minute. The first time an affected creature fails a saving throw to avoid being charmed or frightened. You can add your charisma modifier. <laughs> Ringleader. So you get you get all of these at level nine, right? Yeah. That's There's cool. a lot of stuff. Like this is a lot. You know? Oh, and then there's also the paths. These are like the subclasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh okay. Yeah, let's let's dig into we might have to because we're the only still on the first class here. We might skip oh, yeah. around a little bit and only look at like one of these paths. Also, I don't want to completely spoil the entire book. We're just you doing can, a you can a skip brief past the, the high level stuff. Yeah, yeah. We we'll stick we'll stick in just uh the like levels one through three, one through five. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Okay. So heretic, when you Start at third level. The bonded creature you see misses a roll. You can use your reaction to spend one conviction point and reroll the attack. So uh, these, are, these are very thematic. So yeah, yeah. Have the, the heretic, the insurrectionist, what's, and what's what's the uh, insurrectionist right. here? Insurrectionist through deception and insurgency to assert top, or top regime. regimes. Yeah. yeah. So oh man, I want to play an insurrectionist. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, starting at third level. After speaking with a creature for at least a minute, you can attempt to enthrall them. And they got to make a whiz save. Oh, it's as if being affected by the suggestion spell. You just get suggestion. Nice. That's cool. And then let's see what else we got. Uh, okay, so is this next class rune wielder? Rune wielder. Yeah. Since we're jumping to the next class, let's take a look at uh, the chat here and see if anybody's say anything it looks like zip is uh answering some questions and talking to everybody i appreciate you hanging out in the zip in the chat zip run let's see here we've got uh let's see i'm looking here let's see joshua man has donated five dollars thank you very much uh and highlander nine donated five dollars we got another a non-donation for two dollars thank you very much gentlemen ladies individuals everybody Let's see great weapon master you know we just got lots of lots of stuff talking about the the things feel free to also you know just because there's so much chat activity i'm not sure i can read the the comments in any meaningful way while we're also digging through this but you make a donation i'll definitely see uh see your messages just follow the message immediately after the donation uh let's see here creating a rune wielder this seems so, like a, a magic kind of casting magic. character right it looks like a half caster because we've half only caster, got fifth yeah. level up to fifth level spells so like what is it the paladin and ranger those classes uh simple weapons light armor medium armor shields scholars pack so arcana deception history so i guess something like Halfway between a wizard and a druid ish. Yeah. And it yeah. seems like you, you're, it's all about inscribing these runes. You okay. can on weapons, armor, creatures, a bunch of stuff. That's cool. Let's see. We're at first level, you gain the ability to create powerful magic runes. Uh, etching the stuff. Yep. As you said that. So I guess you're like, you're buffing equipment and stuff like that. Right. Or you can tattoo people, I guess. Right. So maybe it's more like halfway between Artificer and, Artificer. Mm -hmm. and uh, Druid or something. Most of these voices either enhance the next attack. Terry Boone erupt. 
The voice causes runes to erupt violently. I'll take that. Manifest. This voice can only be used while the rune is marked on a runic focus. It allows you to manifest the power of the rune emblazoning it on another point within a certain range of the rune. Uh, I guess that's for like tossing the rune around. Like if you've got it on one thing, you mm -hmm. can decide later to put it somewhere else. And then now, are, are these runes the same as spells or are they is there a list uh, of runes somewhere? Let's see. Oh, OK. So, you can as a part of the study of runic magic, you gain the ability to cast certain spells at second level. Right. So there's general. This is like general spell casting, but through runes through the runes. Yeah, I would imagine they're all like touch spells. We'll probably get oh, into that. Yeah, yeah runic spell casting. Uh, special range of runes. If the spell has a range other than self, you can only cast it while the rune you learned it from is marked on your runic focus. Mm. Interesting. Inter that's a really interesting uh, way to like cap certain things that like wizard spell books have, right? Like you have to have the spell in your book. You have oh. to have the rune carved on your focus. There, there is a list of runes at the bottom. I scrolled down. Oh, yeah, did you? That's, okay. that's really cool. Let's see. Let's see, reinforced voices. I'm just taking a look at some of these abilities. Uh, second level, strike voice. The additional damage is when you reach a spell slot to a maximum of 48. You can reinforce the erupt voice, increasing its radius by five point. Ooh, so this just allows you to like boost the damage and range. Becomes the target of a. You should you scroll down to to the list of runes because I think it's super yeah. interesting. Just okay. analyzing one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where so I where think that's like core to the class. Runic traditions. Did I get? Did I no, pass keep them? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. It's a uh, page twenty nine. Rune scry twenty nine. Here we go. Rune blood. Uh, spells. So like I think the way the way that each rune is broken up is very interesting. Mm -hmm. It has a list of spells. Oh. Uh, strike, manifest, erupt, and enhance. Gotcha. This is fun. So, like each one, it, it almost feels like what is it? There's like a warlock feature, or yeah, there's warlock something that or... like it lets you assume some sort of aspect, and then you can do a bunch of different things based on that aspect. Gotcha. 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 That's fun. It's okay. like rune of fire. It gives you burning hands, scorching ray, wall of fire. Right. And then when and then, you manifest it, you can, or when you strike, you can uh, right. make a ranged spell attack. I love this rune of blood with the manifest ability. Blood begins to be drawn toward a oh. point within 30 feet. Any bloodied creature of your choice ends its turn within five feet of the point. Takes one oh, six tying in the bloodied condition. That's cool. that's cool. I love I love that little. I mean, that's super crunchy. And normally I'm like mega against ultra crunch, but like. You know, the book makes it clear this is straight up for non noobs. So th that's cool. That's that's a cool thing. I might have to steal just that concept and put it in an OSR style magic. Yeah, there, there is a something. ton of stuff to dig into here. Yeah. Burning hands, scorching ray. Oh, I'm just going to look at the manifest of each one of these runes. So rune of fire, fire appears in a five foot radius. For one minute, a creature enters the area or starts its turn there. Uh, make Must make a dex save against your spell and or take uh 1d8 fire let's see and then oh, rune of ice rune, look at rune of speed manifest rune of speeds manifest time okay, hold on i want to look at lightning down. what is that creature makes it, okay 2d6 lightning on the manifest of a lightning that makes sense rune of power rune of vision hold on oh erupt on vision is uh you get a 10 foot thing of darkness that's cool yeah, where did you, rune of speed manifest when you use this voice to manifest the rune uh, choose a point within 30 feet time speeds up or slows down within the five foot point that's our favorite chronomancy when sped up every two feet a creature moves only takes one foot of its movement speed Ooh, one thing i would have liked to have seen is like an ability to shift up in initiative maybe that's yeah. probably way too way too crunchy. Uh, yeah. Maybe like advantage or a bonus to attack or something. I don't know. I feel like that. I feel like that was that could have been just a little bit more punchy. But I'm also a, a time travel nerd, so you know, don't listen to it me. Just, it just <laughs> feels cool. Yeah. Let's see, Therian. Therianthrop. I think that's Therianthropy. a new class. Yeah. 
A slender Alpha One bounce there. What what is going on here? Oh wait. I don't know, but there's a giant shark man. There's a giant shark. <laughs> I think this is a thropy, like lycanthropy. Oh, uh, okay. I think is, is that what this is? That seems like what it is. Ability, yeah, uh, they're individuals with the ability to shift into animals in hybrid form. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. So, yeah, you're so, right oh, wait, this is world. a class for this. Why does this shark have legs? Right. <laughs> That's the <laughs> caption. To <the> <laughs> <What is> this? <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so we've got uh, standard fare for what you would expect. So, for so this is like if you take a druid skill. and just be like, I want to do shape shifting. Yeah, right? I want I want shape shift all the time. Uh, ferocity dice. It's like druid plus barb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Can you do multiple shapes or is it just one? Let's see. I don't know. I'll let Gain you scroll ahead while you're shape. looking at that. So you cursed, you get the predatory critical. Uh, critical hit when you wear shape. However, the thrill of the savagery might overwhelm you after dealing damage from a crit. Make a wisdom save against your savagery DC. On a failure, you cannot attack another creature until the creature you just hit is at zero. I would have argued that it should be you can't do it until they run out of death saves, but I'm just brutal <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, let's see, gifted. So Okay, at, at first level, you choose one of the forms. Aquatic, gotcha. avian, brute, or cunning. Okay. Each of which is detailed at the end of the class description. Okay, so like it seems like you get locked in. Okay. Inherited. You were born the ability to take the hybrid form from your ancestry. Innate adaptation. As long as you aren't incapacitated, each on each turn you can transform either into your wear shape without using your bonus action. You also no longer gain levels of exhaustion in your wear shape feature. Holy cow, that's cool. Nice. Let's see here. Dropping to zero hit points causes you to resume while wearing armor plus your strength or wisdom modifier, whichever is higher. Yeah, so this is like beast mode druid is definitely what I'm reading here. But it's like each, I think each form gives you like very unique abilities. It doesn't just give you a yeah. monstrous stat block. It actually yeah. makes you, it gives you like feats basically, or like features. Oh, well, let's let's jump to that. Yeah, the forms. Is that what you're looking at here? Let's jump, yeah, let's just, jump ahead to that. So Fathom Dweller. I guess this is for aquatic. Yes, yep. this is for aquatic. You can breathe. You got dark vision underwater. Yeah, because then and you can it's... build it however you want. You can probably right. use weapons, I'm assuming, or use right, 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 right. And then hunter in the depths. Does it? Hold on, I didn't. I, I maybe I missed a part. But does it say how long a form lasts, or is that just you can always just be in it? Uh, did it? Zip, answer our question for us. Did, does it say how long we can? Uh, I'm going to skim through it and try and find okay. that answer. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and keep looking at brute form here. Uh, let's see here. Starting at first level, your speed increases by 10. So this is straight up hardcore mode. Just run out and kill stuff. As a bonus action, you can take a search action. At sixth level, you gain one of the following. Maximum hit hit point maximum increases by 12 or you gain d4 frenzy die and then cunning form i assume is going to be yeah sneaky wear fox type mm -hmm. i love this picture this is oh this it says cool. you you can maintain your wear shape for a number of hours equal to half your therian therp level cool so, there you go that's cool that's like a druid uh let's see here scavenger you gain a climb speed slinking shadow at level six you can hide as a bonus pack tactics Ooh, that's gnarly uh and then well, avian you take, form you can take aerial you can take flight at first level that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> aerial build you gain a fly speed equal to half your walk. Yeah, but it's super slow. 15, uh, yeah. okay. 15 feet. That's, that's, that's not it probably gets It probably gets faster as you look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, let's look at Aerie. Okay. Starting at 6th level, level six, you can yeah. spend an hour while in your worship gathering twigs, branches, and small stones to construct a nest. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, let's see. You can choose to include the a trigger mechanism upon which your 
destroys the nest immediately. Twigger stone, known only to you once removed, causes the collapse of the structure. That's interesting. I would love to see something with this class. Maybe it's already in here, but something that forces you, like a flaw that forces you into your mm -hmm. um, werewolf form or whatever, into your shark shark werewolf right. form. Right, right. That'd be a cool, uh, like, role playing element. Right. Yeah, that's something that, like, the negative consequences of choosing a specific class. Is something that I always thought was interesting in the lower, in the lower, in the earlier editions of D and D that I'm mm -hmm. sad they got rid of, like alignment requirements for paladins. That should have stayed. I, I you know, <laughs> I have yeah. I have feelings about that. Uh, let's see. But yeah, picture you're at like a ball. You're doing like a you know a finesse right. social encounter and just turn into a giant shark. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Bounding assault. So these are like uh, warlock abilities or like feats specific to the class. The beast yeah. traits. Diminutive form. You can go into tiny mode. Faint and retreat. That's that's fun. That's super goblin mode. Feral charge. Just, you know, crash in like a rhino. And they each have prerequisites. So that's cool. And these are all the some of the high levels moon beast at night you can use your wear shape feature without suffering levels of exhaustion for one minute you get a plus two bonus to your ac and can make one additional attack when you take this section that's fun so just lots of partial shifts oh, so you can only like partially shift so right you don't have to like go full go full on yeah. animal animal uh you gain dark vision can't mm -hmm. use partial shift while in your wear shape. Duh. Uh, all right. Planar form. Run with the pack. Lots of cool animal yeah. shifting stuff. That's a cool. That's a cool class. Dis yeah. Distinct from the druid, I think. Yeah. No. Absolutely distinct and distinct from the barbarian. It's like mm -hmm. the weird Venn diagram overlap of warlock, druid, and and, and barbarian. Barbarian. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Section contains speaking of new... barbarians, we have speaking of barbarians, yeah, <laughs> variant barbarians. Let's see here. Uh, let's see, variant barbarian. Oh, by the way, before we continue, I just want to remind everybody, uh, we've already met our goal because of everybody being extremely generous. Uh, but please continue to donate, uh, to the Cancer Research Institute. Uh, if you make a donation. Uh, Zipperon Disney will also give away a PDF copy of his uh, Fire and Ice adventure. So help you help help us help you help help me help you help us all. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, yeah, and you know everybody gets free stuff. Everybody gets good stuff, and we we're donating money to a good cause. So please donate more. If you've already donated, donate one more dollar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna raise the, the gotta raise the goal yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna change the goal to one thousand dollars everybody <laughs> <laughs> that's not how goals work i know right <laughs> <laughs> but no thank you all so much for donating it's awesome uh let's see here variant barbarians so i assume animal Both instincts primal primal pass pass. and variant base class yeah also it's like totally changing the barbarian i guess is it totally changing? I assume everything is like norm, mostly normal. It's changing here. some things. With the barbarian. Yeah, yeah. Just a hot swap of different stuff. Your senses have been keened by your time spent in the wilds. You know, I like this advantage because wisdom. it's... That's cool. Yeah, advantage on wisdom. I like that that's there because that's definitely like what would a barbarian, like a woad warrior from the Celts actually mm -hmm. do? You know, that that's cool. Starting at third level, when you rage, you add your strength modifier twice That's instead cool. of once. Let's see, first, add first charge. Uh, at fifth level, it's like so an you're... actual charge ability. That's cool. Yeah. Number of times equal to your constitution modifier, then you got a short rest. Yeah. And when then we get into the higher level stuff, we're not going to spoil that. All right, Mystic Blood. Oh, is this a uh, scroll up? Here we go. Yeah. Unstoppable power. Wait. Sorry, everybody. I'm scrolling a lot. Don't don't at me in the comments so section. Is, are the primal <laughs> paths? These are like the barbarian paths, right? 
uh like it's blood the, oh yeah sub, subclass barbarian there stuff. you go if we just scroll further um from casey pelt i guess this is a third party contributor came yeah, up I think with this the, idea i think the book was is filled with third party mm, stuff or like okay. you know contributors a bunch right, of right, contributors right. actually added to this so that's that's cool uh let's see mystic blood after you you can start with bleed level of zero, but can't go lower. You start with able to being raise your bleed level to two. Really, really mathy pathfinder -y type stuff. After you make a an attack roll, D6, add it to the roll. Increase just, your walking I'm, speed by 15 feet. I'm just skipping ahead again. There's one that uh, helps with uh, mounted barbarians. It's kind Ooh, of cool. let's let's fast forward to that. We got a pit path, fighter. Path of the Stallion. Okay. Path of the Stallion, Spirit Tamer. At third level, you can bond with a creature that can serve as your mount. As an action, choose a beast or monstrosity that can see you as uh, larger than large, as no larger than large, has a CR less than half your barbarian level. Creature That's you cool. And it is charmed. Barbarians need mounts. Yep. I absolutely agree. That's something that you don't see much of is mounted combat. And yeah. I feel like the rules for mounted combat in fifth edition were also a lot of an afterthought. Like the fact that you can attack the creature without hurting, like you should not be able to stab a horse and like there not be a problem with that in combat. Like the horse just takes eight damage. Nothing else happens. Like why would the horse not buck you? You know, <laughs> I, I, I ran it. Sorry, I'm doing an aside, but I, I ran a campaign uh, last year where it was all of the action was happening in a city and like in buildings and stuff and one of my players took a was a paladin and took a mount and i did not know what to do with that damn <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, yep it's in the stables <laughs> yep let's see here uh killer weapons Are we go into it yeah path of the titan slayer hulking beasts entire fellowships so Little maybe a little attack on Titan inspiration. I'm not an anime fan. I just know about that one. <laughs> Path of the Titan Slayer. Is it attack on is that what I'm thinking? Yeah. On the right so, side. Path of the Titan Slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're looking at. Once per long. I guess these are the the uh abilities you get with these cool things. Vertebrae fail flail. As a bonus action, you can give this weapon the reach property until the end of your turn. Huh. You a giant climber. At six levels, you're able to use your comparably limited stature. Great nimbleness. Take on larger foes by climbing. That's cool. That's cool. That's This is like, uh, what is it? Uh, Shadows of the Colossus feelings. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, variant Bards. Bardic performance. All right, so these are the bard subclasses, yep. right? And yep, the bard yep, extra yep. features. Bard extra features. Wait, hold on. Are bards half casters? Am I crazy for thinking they had ninth level spells? Uh, bards are full casters, I thought. Right? Okay, well, in this one, they are not. They're not. I'm I'm now suddenly questioning my five e knowledge of bards. Not that I've encountered them very often oh, in my five sorry. years of running five e, but. I thought they were full casters. I thought they were too. I might be crazy. Okay. Bardic performance. Uh, you know, two Goes such two, performances. Three, four, four. Two, Let's three, see. four, four. I, I think regular bards are full casters. Okay. Yeah. Zip just said in the chat that this is a half caster bard, I believe. Ah, okay. Got yeah. it. Okay. But then we get like various repertoires. Starting at second level, you possess as extensive knowledge of myths and legends. Roll a d100. If you roll a number equal to or lower than your bard level three times, you recall lore about a subject. Okay. Why a d100? <laughs> Certainly. And that, I guess it's because so you can go all the way up to 20. Yeah. Huh. Or a verse of... Interesting that it's a d100 three times. It's like disadvantage three times because it isn't a uh, the cleric ability that's similar to get a, a deity boon. 
like you just roll a d100 once but this is a second level yeah i mean it's yeah. just it's just, to it's just play with the uh, probabilities yeah 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 plus how often do you get to roll a d100 you don't i i don't know i would like to see this just just go one time you get it you get i mean when you get it a second level you have to roll a one or a two that's a two percent chance you know it's it's a chance it's a chance, but I don't know. Not like <laughs> As a class when there's not a good game. opportunity of success. I feel like players just won't do it. You know what I mean? Well, is there is there a downside time. to it? No. Featuring so, Triarocola. You cannot do it again unless you spend four hours researching it. Yeah. Okay. You can keep trying. It's like a thing that like you keep trying and then when you eventually eventually get it, actually yeah, you trigger it off. It's like this. Oh, my God moment, you know? Yeah. And then we get uh, let's see here. Various performances, baffling rhapsody that you get at uh, seventh level. So you cool. get the confusion spell. All creatures affected must adhere to the behavior you choose instead of randomly rolling. That's brutal. Uh, let's see. Call to battle. Uh, what do we got here? Call to battle. Additional D4 when rolling damage. Okay, so it's uh, like the Paladins damage mm -hmm. bless, but to a group. Counter curse. Uh, once you finish. So you stop blind, deaf, and poison. Cool stuff like that. Interesting way to like warlockify a bard is what it yeah. feels like is going on here. Zip, I'm curious, was 4th edition your first edition of D&D? &D, or did you go... What was your first edition of D&D &D that you played? I'm curious if you can comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just curious, like, where you started on the timeline. Because I started on AD&D 2. I, uh, I skipped to the College of Spoons. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let's just go straight to the College of Spoons. That's a good idea. Hopefully, you don't get a playwright. You know, We've got stuff don't, like don't that. Don't get demonetized for this. Or... <laughs> <laughs> but just, just uh, read the description. Yeah, that, that's the spoony funny. beginnings. You're self taught. You try to keep your magical influence subtle. Uh, you try to make it look more like you just happening to be extremely attractive while dancing. Your family has several accomplished dancers. They consider your abilities to be mediocre at best. Hilarious. So spoons could mean cuddling, but it could also mean castanets, I guess is what I'm understanding. Yeah, I think if, you, if you read the paragraph at the very beginning of it, it's like jangling of tassels and right, of right, right, right. Yeah. Shaped like spoons. Right. I get it. This is a, a cool way to like give feminine characters like obviously you can give it to masculine kind of characters too that's totally oh, yeah like, i feel legit. like uh, but like it, it, to gamify that in a in a tactile and and crunchy way which yeah. i've not seen before like if you watch uh critical role i think the the first uh, the bard character in that is like this basically right Okay, that's the what what else do we get? Chain of dances, alluring, choose a humanoid in 30 feet, whiz save, or can't look away. Anything that harms the creature. Ooh, that's fun. That's great to use uh, you know, what is it? Uh Charlie Wilson's war. That's that's what immediately comes to mind. Everybody just has a diplomatic meeting in Egypt while uh the Minister of Defense is getting a show. <laughs> uh <laughs> Let's see. Feverish, you dance yourself into a wild frenzy of unbridled passion. An ally expends one of its bardic inspiration dice and adds it to an attack or damage roll. You can add half the result to your own roll of the same kind before the end of your next turn. That's fun. That's cool. Yep. Let's see. What do we got? Divine domains. Arts domain. Arts is in artwork or arts is in craftsmanship. Let's see. This is cleric uh, subclass. Yeah, this right? is a cleric yeah. subclass. Correct. Okay, so you get charm person, color spray, calm emotions, and throw. Okay, so this is like fine art, fine artwork. I like hypnotic it. pattern, dominate person in creation. Very cool. It's like an artsy cleric. Yep. Uh, this battle hymn. 
The affected creature gains temporary hit points equal to your wisdom modifier. Emotive release, inspiring influence. Let's see. Subject can be a creature, a faction, such as a guild or noble house, or some abstract idea, such as war or love. The effect lasts one hour. Inspiring influence. Channel divinity is a burst. Oh yeah, let's let's go through and look at the channel divinities because I, I always think that those are some That's of the most the interesting feature, yeah. abilities of the class. Yeah, burst of inspiration. Your deity makes their creative will known to those around you, and you are the muse. This raw creative energy can help your allies find solutions and opportunities they would have over otherwise overlooked. As a reaction to a friendly creature within sixty feet, making an attack roll. Or an ability check, you can roll a d6 and add that number to the ally's roll. You can wait until after the ally rolls. Uh, so it is a way to grant a d6 bonus. Let's see here. But you can do it after they roll. After they cool. roll. So you're yeah. like, oh, I got a 13. Can you do that like... for all? A, as a, a To a friendly creature within... You can roll... You know... I'm I'm yeah, not sure just, I would have made it to a single. It's a, it's a channel would, divinity, so like yeah, it, it it's a channel divinity. Your, yeah, because you only get one of those at a lower mm -hmm. level, and bards get a lot of them. Yeah, I don't know. I might have I might have made it so that it, because it's like a one and done situation at lower levels. I might have made that like all characters within sixty feet just suddenly get that oh, like yeah. they all get one d six die roll on their next roll or something something of that nature. I feel Could like that's that's a little on the weak side. That's just me. So then we got harmony domains. Let's look at their domain spells. Command sleep, calm emotions, dispel magic, magic circle, banishment. Two emotion. channel divinities. <laughs> huh. Oh, did he change the channel divinity? I'm not going to do that. Sorry, guys. I'm scrolling. Don't, Narb, look it up for us. What's that? Uh, did they, do we get more channel divinities? Oh, okay. Let me look. Yeah. How many channel divinities do we get? Because if it's a, the alternate cleric, it might make sense that you know these have more opportunities to. Hmm. You know what? It doesn't channel. Say. It just says okay. cleric. And that uh, says the domains. Let's see. Command, sleep, calm emotions, dispel magic, magic circle, banishment, compulsion, dominate person and gaze. So very, very uh, abjure. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and then torrent of peace. Starting at second level, you can channel your divinity to tap into the divine well of peace that flows through you. As a bonus action, you can project these feelings, giving all hostile creatures within 60 feet of you disadvantage on their saving throws against spells you cast to charm them. This projection will last for 10 minutes or until you dismiss it using another bonus action. Like, balance-wise comparing... Yeah. Charm them? Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. Like when you absolutely positively have to get off a zone of truth or a suggestion or a dominate or something like that, that like, cool. I, you know, yeah, I, it seems a bit weak, but yeah, well, of yeah. course, now that I'm saying those words out loud, I'm like, are those things actual charm ish? Like, is this uh, charm the condition or charm is in to charm them to I'm charm sure. them? Like, are we talking about charm person, the spell it might or have to be. like the charm effect? Up to the DM. Yeah. Kind of and thing. then we get another one. Censure violence. Uh, immediately after attack within 60 feet of you. Force the attacker to make a wisdom save. This is all about like stopping. Stopping stuff from attacks. happening. Yeah. Causing peace. And then they get stunned if they fail. So it's sort of like a poor man's um, sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Druid. One of my favorite classes. So it's a bunch of uh, druid circles. Yeah. Let's see, we got the circle of harvest. Okay, harvest so it's, we just go straight tides. into the circle. So there's no changes to the class other than additional circles. Yeah, that seems so, like it. Of the harvest is mystic agrog agronomy. I can pronounce words. Um, magic, magically enlarged grains and vegetables. So they weigh 10 times more. Fill a ten foot area with uh with heavily obscurement. So wait, you're just it's growing great. vegetables? You just like dropping basically uh <laughs> like entangle or fog cloud, depending on the vegetation. Ten feet <laughs> high? Ten feet high, <laughs> oh ten God. foot radius, number of times equal to your whiz mod. 
Well, that's and not exploitable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I think about this as this a second just... level ability and compare that with some of the uh, divine or the channel divinities. And like that is way more useful or yeah, more what's impactful. Your ge- what's your geopolitical take on that? <laughs> uh, oh, man, don't. <laughs> we don't need to get into that. <laughs> it, do you know what happened to like the people who inspired the Merlin story in actual history when the Romans invaded Europe or invaded uh, the British Isles? That'll that'll tell you what should happen there. Uh, let's see here. So Blight Exorcist is additionally a second level. You learn how to remove harmful toxins from plants and how to release them back out. Protection from poison and poison spray. That's cool. That's fun. Bountiful harvest, plant growth as a spell. You always know it. Uh, This spell also has special properties when you cast it. You can cast the spell using an action. And you can selectively choose which spaces within the area. Ooh, that's fun. Okay, so then Circle of Tides. You get Fog Cloud, Call Lightning, Control Water, and Conjure Elemental. This would be cool on a a a, campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as an action, create a whip of water. Does a whip stuff. Do you get control water? Uh, do we? Control water at seventh level. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I had a. Everyone wonders what you can do with control water. I had a cleric cast a whole lot of create water once mm-hmm. in a dungeon, flooded the dungeon, and then used control water to run it back and forth on the ground while they were fighting a vampire. I forget. Is control water let you freeze <laughs> it as well? Which one lets you freeze it? I don't remember. I don't think it does, but I i mean, I don't have the spell in front of me, so. Let me look it up. Uh, let's see. As you, okay, so flow allows you to make a whip and uh, animal friendship and speak with animals. You can cast one of the spells targeting a fish or other dwelling sea creature. You can cast the other well, spell targeting That one's called the same shape creature. water. It's a cantrip. Ah. So shape water lets you actually freeze it too. Okay. Control water is like a bigger, badder version of shape water. Right. Let's see. Water wielder. Let's see, starting at sixth level. Channel the mystic properties of the water flowing through living things. Whenever you cast a spell that restores hit points to a creature that's not a construct or undead, you can touch a creature for additional hit points. So you give them you give them water boy water from Alaska. Nice. Uh, let's see here. That Fiji water. Exactly. Uh, okay, so now we're getting into fighter variants. We just get some cool right, classes. So, so we get the this this does get different uh, fighter rules. Like I'm yeah. Like the ones so at so. level two, you get combat value, valor and improved reflexes. So we'll look at those. Uh, you can leap into action with extreme vigor. As a bonus action, you can make a single weapon attack. So these replace second wind, action surge, and indomitable. Okay, so that yeah. they should be or pretty good you, if they replace Or do those. you get, let's let's see. Yeah, yeah when it says you, you no longer gain the following features, and then okay. you instead gain these other features. No action surge. Yeah, that's pretty huge. Yeah, that's, ooh, that's, that's a trade-off. This is better be good. Okay, starting at second level, you can leap into action and make an attack and gain temporary hit points. So you get it all, oh, but it's okay. much more structured. And then you can move up to half your movement without provoking attack of opportunity. So you just rush in. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, anonymous with a $50 donation. Thank you very much. And like I said, if you guys are uh, just coming into the chat and um, you are anonymously don- donating, feel free to email me your uh donation receipt to the email address listed on my about page on the YouTube channel. And I'll make sure that you get a copy of fire and ice, the adventure written by zipper on Disney. Since we met our goal, anybody who donates is getting a copy of fire and ice. Uh, Let's see here. So starting at ninth level, you can make two weapon attacks with that feature. Uh, And then Improved reflexes at seventh level. You've mastered how to duck and dodge. You gain proficiency on deck saves. And then you add half your proficiency to uh, mental stats on iron will. So that's cool. 
and then superior fighting style. That's all high level stuff. We'll skip past that. Martial arts types. You get brawler. So as a at third level as a bonus action, you can move half your speed. Third level, you can on your unarmed strike increases to a D4. And at seventh level, your unarmed strikes count as magical. That works. This is like the monk monkification of the, the monkification of the fighter. Yeah, at seventh level, your sharpened reflexes allow you to dodge out of the way of magic and effects. Lightning. Uh, let's see. So, oh, it's. I don't even know why I'm reading. I should have just read evasion. You get evasion, right. <laughs> and then defender. Uh, defensive like stance protection stuff. Yep. This is distinct from that. There's got a, there is Oop, a fighter too far. that is called take a bonus action. Oh, no, feature. I'm thinking of just there's like a, a fighter feature that just like lets you defend. Mm. But that's it. This like expands on that. Right. So lots of uh, defensive stuff. Dragoon fighter. So you get lances and spears just like a dragoon would have. Uh, in addition, spears and tridents, you will. What, whenever I hear dra dragoon, I think of uh, StarCraft because that's when I first saw the word. <laughs> <laughs> so not, this has no Not meaning. the Lancer <laughs> cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's funny. Say so intrusive weapon, seventh level. You take disengage or harry as a bonus action. That's fun. Okay, and then Dragon Bound from David Cook. Uh, Dragon, let's say magic, greater magic. Looks like you get spells just to cast at third level when you select this archetype. Choose a dragon type, and then you learn two cantrips from the corresponding tradition. Let's see. So yeah, you get some spell casting instead. That's cool. I like how cuz sometimes I feel like the Eldritch Fighter, that's what it's called, right? Is a little yeah. confusing and honestly weirdly limiting because you can only take like you can only truly get real yeah, access it's to sort of forces and, you to have to learn all these spell casting rules as a fighter right. without yeah. yeah, without actually so, like investing uh, too much into them, I don't know. No, 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 you're totally correct. And so what I like about this is that like you just get a more simplified version that is much more free form, which yeah. is interesting from this book because it's definitely been much more crunchy than typical fifth edition. Uh, let's see here. So you just get some dragon attacks. If you take an attack, you can fast swipe. You get a dragon breath at 15th level. Oh, that's fun. I'm starting to move a little quicker just because uh, we've been on the stream now for quite a while. Oh yeah, and it's starting to get late, um, and I'm sure we got. Yeah, we're only like halfway bed. through this book. Yeah, <laughs> not even. So half. let's uh, let's zip let's zip a little bit. What what what's wait maybe ask ask the chat. What's like yeah. one thing you guys want us to look at? What's what's some stuff you guys want to look at in the chat? You know, if we can look at the table of contents to give people a, a uh, we can what bounce back up there real quick. Yeah, let's see. Whoop. Gonna make everyone sick again. Sorry, I'm making everyone dizzy. Page, page eight. Page eight. Can I get to page eight? Or page eight and nine. there we go. Okay, so we've looked at the classes. Uh, oh, I really want to look at. Is there anything in Wizard we want to look at? Idol on Patreon. Yeah, we Patreon. gotta look at the Chronomancy Wizard. Yeah, we'll definitely look at Chronomancy, and and then maybe we can jump into the the feats. I want to kind of take and the spells, you know, take a quick yeah, look yeah, at yeah. those. Okay. And then and I then definitely want to look at it. I want to look at the GM toolkit. I definitely want to look at the monster templates and environments. All so right, let's, let's do that. Let's, yeah. Yeah. What, what okay. page was the wizard? So let's look at Chronomancy is 97. So let's try 97 and then earmark what page numbers are next, if you don't mind, Narb. Yeah. What was so the other here. one you wanted to look at? Uh, the monster templates and the environments. Okay, I think so I remember the seeing. Yeah, 
I, I think I remember, or was there, there was another thing you wanted to look at too, right? No, that was it. Okay. Yeah, I think the I remember were 122 seeing... and the spells were 124. Okay. And then the GM toolkits shortly after that. It's like 138 or something. Gotcha. Yeah, I remember seeing Zip like roll on random encounter tables in the book. And I'm curious to look at those. I love, I, like, that's one of my favorite things is a good random table. Random tables tell far more a story than people let on or oh, people yeah. people understand. Like, what is in the table has a very dramatic impact on what's in the game in a way that is oddly profound that. I'm not sure people get until you really start to think about it. Um, so we've got so, uh, arcane recovery, spell mastery, so you and replace spells. arcane recovery, spell mastery, and signature spells. If you mm -hmm. want to take the variant wizard and you got spell memorization, studious. Okay. Perfect recall. Oh, it's perfect recall. At 20th Tenure. level recast. until you recast a memorized spell is reduced from one minute to the start of your next turn. Wait, what? <laughs> And Zipron is saying the random tables are so good. So I'm just getting even oh, more excited. We'll, we'll get to those. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting excited. Okay. Okay, so spell memorization. You cannot have the same number of spells memorized no more than once. The number of spells and the highest level spell you can memorize oh. determines your wizard level as shown on the spell memorization table. So you can memorize spells effectively after more. Uh, but let's get to the chronomancer. I'm going to scroll. I'm going to scroll to the chronomancer. Here we go. All creatures of the material plane must walk one step at a time, but not the chronomancers. Mm -hmm. They look for shortcuts. Heck yeah. Okay, so chronomats, chronomatics. When you select this tradition at second level, you learn to manipulate the flow oh, of that's magic so cool. and time. Uh, when you cast a spell with a casting time of one action, you in can instead change its casting time to a bonus action. You can't make an attack or cast another spell of the same term. If you cast a spell with a casting time of at most 11 minutes, you can change the casting time to one minute. Oh, so that's you cool. speed it all up. Uh, you would normally take no more than two hours to cast. You can instead complete it in 10 minutes. No more I than two. How long, hold on. How long does Gaius take to cast? Can somebody in the comments tell us how long Gaius takes to cast? I can't remember. I feel like it's, it's 10 minutes. So does this... Is it 10 minutes or an hour or something? I'm trying to find it. It's, it's one minute. It's one minute. Okay. So that means that it is now a action to cast. Good Holy Lord. shit. That is, <laughs> that, is, that is disturbingly powerful. Okay. I like this wizard. This, yeah. I'm, next time I roll a, a wizard, I'm totally going to do this. <laughs> you know, Just how often do I actually play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost never play. Uh, let's see here. Uh, starting at second level, you gain the ability to contact a past or future oh. version of yourself. Okay. <laughs> Your alternative self appears as an ethereal form. So is this like Jedi Knight talking to yourself? You can you... ask your alternative self one question about a specific course of action you want to take in the next hour. So this is like uh, divination type stuff, but yeah, it's, very, it's very personal because like you're yeah. talking to yourself. Great, great flavor. Great flavor. Starting at 10th level, you can link to an alternate timelines. Ooh, back to the future. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. And then get... That's great. I like it. At 6th level, you add nice haste and slow. slow. Yep. That makes sense. And intertwined echo. Starting at 10th level, you can create an echo of yourself. At the beginning oh, of your turn, nice. you can use a bonus action to create an echo of yourself that lasts until the start of your night. Wait. Is this like my what is it mirror image or something at initiative zero oh, the echo performs the same, same actions, actions and movements you did on your turn what oh man the this... echo can move attack cast cantrips and use your class features you're gonna need a whiteboard and some string for playing oh this <laughs> my gosh that is that is great that is awesome and mega broken <laughs> i love it I love it. That is fantastic. Something occurs that would prevent the echo from repeating your actions. Nice. Oh, man. So how often can you use this ability? Once you use uh, this feature, you can use it again until you finish yeah, long rest. So okay, so it, it's effectively action surge for wizards. So you get the dip without having to get the dip. But it's, but it's, it's, it's very gated. It's not 
Yes. It's because it does the same actions and movements you did. So it's right. Like, Right, right. If you shoot so off a firebolt somewhere in a direction, it might not work. Right. The same way. <laughs> but but with haste, you can only cast like one spell still, right? Yeah. This yeah. you get two meteor swarms. Right. <laughs> if you plan it properly. If yeah, you plan sure. it correctly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if you're not, then what the hell are you doing? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Does this mean okay, so GM call question here. If the wizard casts uh rock to mud, can the echo cast mud to rock therefore mm. in one turn you sink everybody into five feet of of mud and then capsule encapsulate them all in the mud hey, i, in I the would probably turn. rule that you'd have to do the same thing so okay an alternate <laughs> but i mean that's just me i don't know yeah yeah i, I hate fun <laughs> <laughs> starting at 14th level when you use your chronomatic ability to cast a spell as a bonus action, you can cast another spell in the same turn as long as that spell is a cantrip of an action type. Okay. All right. So, so what was the next one we want to look uh, at? 124. Yeah. 124. Aerial Warrior. So these uh, are feats. You can take you, these at various levels. You can right? make aerial Close. attacks wearing armor, and you have a flying speed of 25 feet. Uh, Teeth <laughs> Oh, interesting. In addition, you have a magical antique of your own. You may have inherited it. Plus one of bonus ability checks and saving throws of one ability of your choice. Alternatively, the antique provides you with one of the following benefits. A noble's notable signet. I wear one of those. This trinket bears <laughs> <laughs> the mark of a noted house, magically lending you credibility of interpersonal affairs. Uh, this trinket protects from fatal blows. You can cast the shield spell once a day with the trinket. Orientator? Orienter? Orien Orienter. It's a See, compass. I'm looking at a bunch of these. They look a uh, slightly more powerful than mm -hmm. like the regular feats. Like some of them increase points and then give you some skills. Mm -hmm. But they also give you like like herbalist. Time it takes you to craft antitoxin is halved. So like they give you some extra flavor. Right. Magic Marksman, as an action, you store the potential of a spell within range of touch, so you can just power up an arrow yeah. with a... Che Cheater of Death at the top is a bit... like I don't know if that's as powerful in 5th edition, where like dropping to zero hit points isn't really that big of a deal. Right. But, eh, I don't know. Could Which, be by the way, if you want an easy way to Dark Souls your game... Just get rid of the last two death saves and make it so that when they get to their turn on death saves, they automatically fail it. Oh, that's, I like that. <laughs> that's the easy homebrew to still maintain the functionality of, the, of a death saves, but make the game far more deadly. Uh, speaking of death saves. Okay, so we've, we're on to the spells, but it looks like we've kind of already bumped into some of this stuff like Chrono Shift, Detect them, Yeah. So anyway, what was the next thing? I know we wanted to look at spells, but we're getting late here. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, so they added that. Chrono Shift to the... That's Chrono cool. Shift, yeah. I might, I might look at these when we get done with the stream later, once I'm not yelling through the house, just Quick disturbing people who want to sleep. <laughs> I have I had made a, a, a Chrono-type spell at some point. Yeah, I remember you sharing that with me. I'll have to dig it up. It was slightly different than this. Um, so you want to jump to DM Toolkit, right? Yeah, Let's look. let's look at the random tables, and then we'll call it. Okay. I think. Chapter 3, 140. 140. Okay. Environment templates. The abyss. Demon spawning on initiative count zero. Oh, wait. Hold up. These templates can be applied to easy, easily modify the terrain of a combat encounter. This is useful for GMs who want a simple way to add environmental effects. Yes! This is like... This is something that I see so many people struggle with. This right here, if this is as good as I hope it's going to be, if it's half as good as I hope it's going to be, everybody, seriously, the link for this at Drive Through RPG is in the description of the live of the chat. And I'm Go just reading it. through it. One this of them is, is this is I'm excited. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> immediately after initiative is rolled, a ten foot radius bottomless pit opens randomly on the battlefield. So that's that's awesome, right? Vents spewing tainted blood or poison gas dot the landscape. 
so great and like these little flavorful environmental effects wait is this a d66 table oh minimum layer d100 i think d100 What's is that a d1000 layers Am the I... deeper the abyssal landscape and counter take place the more dismal features present on the battlefield so basically i think the layer depth alters what okay. is possible i'm not sure the, the deeper the abyssal landscape yeah I don't, there's cool stuff here though carnivorous swamps dreamscapes powerless to exert themselves physically nightmares made real falling to wake when a creature within the dreamscape reaches zero hit points the ground crumbles beneath them and they fall into a yawning pit black abyss before they hit the bottom they wake with a jolt in the real world dry desert a combat encounter in the open desert can be made more interesting with these additions dunes a scorpion nest just you know fighting a fighting a lamia or a sphinx in the middle of the desert and all of a sudden bam you just get hit with scorpions <laughs> haunted chilling cold damage resistance Ooh, un cool. this is stuff that i wish was in the like they put a lot of stuff in the monsters manuals that mm -hmm. i think was overdone and this is the like stuff like this like the environment has an impact on the monsters where you go into a location and you know that it's like those zombies are this way when they're attacking the town square. But when you go into the graveyard, they're going to have turn resistance and stuff like that just is not in the DMG. Right. It's not in That's like true. this is this is awesome. This is what needs to be there. And I'm glad this is here. So I see we've got slick slide dex checks or you or you screw up thin ice a creature who falls into the water must make a dc 17 concept interesting that it's specifically a 17 i wonder if there's a a reason he picked that number any fire makes contact with the area needed to collapse it's reduced to 250 feet <clears throat> see lava escape noxious gases shifting flows waves of magma I'm I'm gonna dig into this much more with a fine tooth comb. These are really good ideas. Okay, so yeah, we've got we've got a lot of good ideas. Let's let's okay, wait, where's the where's the random tables? What what page are the random tables on? I want to see the monster random mm -hmm. tables. So the monsters are next. I'm trying to find Okay, tables. so that's the template. Just trying to find tables. Unique I mutation. found the index. I mean, there is there is some tables on the on the environment section. Did I did I just like scroll past them and not notice that they were there? Like, there's the there's the abyss uh, tables, and okay. then there is the whoa. Where was what it? did I do? Lava escape. The spine yeah. of Tor has some. Let's scroll back tables. up. Sorry, the whimsical, everybody. The whimsical one has some tables as well. Right. Demon spawning, sense by arrogance. And yeah, we're just gonna throw a glabber zoo at you because you did that. Environment templates. Uh, I'm going to jump to the table of contents real fast and see if it's there. And that was on page eight, right? Yes, or nine. Nine. Yeah. Let's see. Variant rules. Uh, it's after the adventure, he says. Appendix, random tables, 180. End of the book. Uh, 180. All right, last thing we're looking at, guys, and then we're calling a night. I really appreciate everybody sticking around for as long oh, as we okay. have. Random Very tables. cool. There we go. Uh, but, you know, remember to uh, donate and you get a copy of uh, Ice and Fire. And and also thanks to everybody who uh, made this fundraiser a success. I honestly thought 500 would, would be a stretch goal, but you guys knocked it out of the park. Hell yeah! Uh, in fact, let's let's take a moment real quick before we uh, finish it out here. Do we have any other donations? We've got, uh, like we said, Highlander donated nine. We get an anonymous donor donor of uh, two dollars. Another anonymous donation of a hefty fifty, and. Mm -hmm. Jake Shinary donated $5. Thank you guys very much. Okay, so...
magic items. It's 182, I think. Are you on one page 182? Did I not go far enough? Here we go. Okay. Fetch quest generators. Location of objective. Oh, this is cool. A small commune in a tree perched atop a cliff <clears throat> in the middle of a field of toxic flowers. And then what you're seeking, what you're seeking is an ornate hairbrush used by a deity. The complication is <laughs> the location requires the death of a person to access. Oh, fun. Awesome. Super fun. Let's see here. VC's favorite holiday. A cosmic oh. event. Two stars in line. <laughs> <laughs> Two stars in line. Which they have great personal significance. Rites of spring. Men and women must cover themselves and be apart for the day. That's hmm. uh that's very um reminds me of a, a lot of uh Orthodox Judaism and sure. marriage ceremonies a little bit. It just, I mean, that's not a direct representation at all. It just kind of lodges that in my mind. Yeah, I mean, there's day of the departed as well. It's right. probably like seeding from a bunch of different cultures. So uh, you can use the table names. to generate titles for your NPCs. Ooh, dungeon dressings on the next page. That's cool. The knob moves when you try to open it. Creatures must succeed. That's funky. <laughs> it moves around if, the door. If, or... if I pulled something like that on my murder hobo group, they would just they would just the bash eyes. the door in. <laughs> so the door could have eyes. Metal banding that gets red hot when pushed. Scars, slightly magical objects. Ooh, these are fun because then you get like if you do this sparingly. Your players mm. will start casting like all kinds of like divination spells on it to try and figure out what the heck it is. Oh, an empty bucket that vanishes whatever is put in it. That's awesome. Oh man, that's good. I, like, where I, does it go though? Yeah, <laughs> and where does it go? Maybe it goes into the cup of like some demon in the nine hells. Repurposed rooms, old use. This was a galley, and it is now an alchemy alchemy lab. Food cellar is now the boss's pi private room. Man, that would uh, be interesting. I'd be so overweight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Overland travel, sure. dynamic hazards. Uh, terror on initiative count 20. The GM chooses one creature that must make a DC 10 wisdom saving throw or be frightened of a random feature in the area. I'm, I'm frightened of that table over there. Right. Dynamic terrain hazards. That's interesting. Like these are just really interesting prompts to think through. Like, because it may not make sense, but why? Why could it make sense? Yeah, you right? could you could weave a story around it. Right, you know, right, right. And sometimes those those cool those little plan. oddities like that just really push you into a, a place that you wouldn't have thought of on your own. Mystical fungi, man, we got all kinds of stuff. Slightly magical animals. A tiny bluebird that will cast guidance, targeting the creature it alights upon. An adorable mouse. It will cast cause fear when creatures like oh that. man have to get too close. Uh, Sorry, cool. elephant. A sloth that will carry will cast sanctuary on a person who is ever carrying it. That's phenomenal. The scrawny monkey that casts meld into stone will cast the spell on those who feed it. What? <laughs> what? what? That's, that's Monster activities. Two d six. So we're going for a bell curve with hunting and foraging here. Mm -hmm. but performing for a potential mate and undergoing a magical transformation are in the rare slots. You know, I think sense. this is, I think this is the one time I think it's, I'm, I'm down with a bell curve 2d6 table just because of what's on here. Just make like, them slightly this, weird. This makes sense for an animal, right? Like, yeah, an for an animal, animal monsters, humanoid activity, tracking prey for hunt. Okay. Performing a religious ritual and don't want to be disturbed. And they found some treasure. These, this is cool. This is this like is a cool. good application of a bell curve. Yeah. Yes, I would agree. And normally I can't stand a bell curve, but this is this this works. You you get the the Baron stamp of approval on that random table. Zip. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Hostile and hungry. <laughs> the, general, <laughs> the general state of the monster. Yeah. I lo I like these little dispositions. Uh, just a little bit more than like, it. It's rough that th these kinds of tables 
are just a little too much to like stick in your like to have three of them takes up a lot of real estate in a dm screen now i don't personally use a dm screen but like i know a lot of people do i've told mm -hmm. people about it but like that's a lot of real estate to put in a dm screen which is unfortunate because this is the kind of stuff that i would want in there of course i'm yeah. not really sure what else i would put in there yeah. you know i don't use lines yeah I mean, of course, I just wouldn't put the table on the table. just just a picture of each player with like an X drawn across it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here, uh, art objects, art objects. meteorite when wielding this weapon. Yeah, Let's that go. that would be useful. Art objects while you're while right. You're what is dungeon this? crawl? Ooh, extraordinary weapons made with specific properties. Bone. The wielder can choose to have this weapon deal necrotic damage instead of its normal type whenever not in bright light these are these are fun meteorite when wielding this weapon the user's dark vision range increases by 30 feet so if you don't have dark vision do you not increase it uh paper you can choose to use your intelligence modifier for the attack and damage rolls with this weapon you, you suffer from damage yeah use a paper weapon <laughs> that's fun yeah i will paper cut you with my paper sword because i'm smart yeah heroic boons use this table to give players power to manipulate the game world and there's a lot of cool stuff in here uh and then memorialized npcs appendix is full of, from deceased players access oh this is this is this is cool i feel like it would be um i feel like everybody should check this out like you know take a little bit of time to give each of these npcs some appropriate reverence this is this is a cool way to memorialize these players and their characters. Absolutely. Very very cool. So I'm not I'm not going to like because I don't have time to go through all of them. I'm not going to go through them here and like pick and choose the wrong one. I'm just this is cool that there's this many in here. I assume that like people that have had players pass away submitted these. If I'm correct, right, Zipperon? You can let us know in the chat. This is this is a really cool way to memorialize people. Very, very cool. Or people that knew Galder, maybe. Yeah, or people who knew Galder, yeah. So and then I guess that's an illustration of Galder. And then we're back to the index. But uh yeah, thanks so much, everybody, for uh let's see, we'll we'll turn start and stop sh screen sharing. Okay, so I guess we're back to the talking heads. But thanks so much for joining us for this live stream. This carried on quite a bit longer than I thought it would be. Um, Zipperon, this is awesome stuff. Yeah, if you want a great book. Yeah, this is really cool. Um, if you want to check it out, a link to uh, the PDF and the hardcover is on Drive Through RPG. There's a link to it in the description. And uh, Narb, thanks so much for joining me, man. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. This, this is awesome. This is fun. Yeah, this is super fun. So and also thanks for putting this together, Zip. This is for a great cause, and it's really cool to see this as a memorial to people who have played D D that have passed away. I, I assume from cancer. I I didn't read all the details. I'm just making that assumption, or possibly anything. Um, but yeah, very very cool stuff. I love the random tables. That was awesome. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for joining me here, and uh, I will see you all later. Bye. I'm just gonna wave until yeah. the stream. Right, are we done? I don't know. Are we gonna wave? <laughs> Steam will Let's see. Your stream will stop immediately and you will no longer be live. And it looks like I'm done. So I will end it. There we go.